Chinese rover just found something mysterious on the far side of the moon. Is it the remnants of another civilization? Hi guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today we will be taking a look at the mysterious object found by a Chinese rover on the other side of the moon. Make sure to stick till the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. Scientists claim China's U-22 rover, part of the Chang'e 4 mission, has discovered several small glass globules on the moon's far side. The glass beads discovered by U-22 are significantly larger and translucent than the microscopic ones that the Apollo astronauts discovered in lunar samples they brought back. The beads were found by looking at panoramic images taken by the rover. There is only observational evidence of the composition of the glass beads because the rover lacks sampling capabilities and is not a sample return mission like its older sibling, the Chang'e 5 mission. This study is led by Dr. Zhiyong Zhao, Planetary Environmental and Astrobiological Research Laboratory, School of Atmospheric Sciences, Sun Yat-sen University, who is a core scientific team member of the first in-situ lunar mission to the moon, Chang'e 4. How did the Chinese rover spot glass globules? The rover's panoramic camera spotted the two glass spheres as it drove across the surface of the von Karman crater on the far side of the moon. The Apollo astronauts previously collected similar glass globules of about the same size, but those examples were mostly dark or opaque. The globules simply blow our mind since they are so unique on the moon. Ji Yong Zhao, lead author of new research about the spheres and the planetary scientist at Sun Yat-sen University and the Chinese Academy of Sciences, said in a statement. Zhao has been researching microscopic glass spherules on the moon, usual distal impact glasses created by terrestrial impact events, and tektite and microtektites. However, they did not anticipate finding such translucent glass globules in the Chang'e 4 landing zone. Further research on globule. Zhao and his team assumed the small spheres, which are between 0.59 and 0.79 inches across, were probably created by fairly recent meteor impacts. Particularly, the researchers believe that the globules formed from anorthosite, a volcanically formed rock rich in the mineral feldspar, after a high-energy impact dissolved the rock and reformed into spheres. According to Zhao, the brand new discoveries were the first discovery of macro-sized translucent glass globules on the moon. The discovery of these spheres on the moon raises the possibility that impact processes could also produce impact glasses on other planetary bodies. And on the moon, according to Zhao, such glass spheres ought to be regularly created by old impacts and may help decipher the early history of lunar impacts. Furthermore, many countries are now striving to establish lunar bases for long-term human stays on the moon. The anorthosites could be beneficial for astronauts looking to produce glass on the moon, indicating such material may not need to be transported from Earth. Lunar anorthosites are excellent raw materials to manufacture glasses with good light-emitting quality, Zhao said. The researchers are limited in their analysis because they do not have data from U22's spectrometer, which could have provided greater insight into the composition of the glass globules. While taking pictures of the objects, the rover did not pause to focus its visible and near-infrared spectrometer instrument in order to gather reflected spectra. Samples collected by Apollo Tiny glass beads were discovered in the Apollo samples from a number of the missions, but they were exceedingly small and less than one millimeter. According to studies on those beads, their origins are volcanic, and the chemical composition determines their various colors. For instance, scientists discovered green beads in lunar soil gathered by astronauts on the Apollo 15 mission in 1971, and glass beads colored the infamous orange soil of Apollo 17 in 1972. The moon's volcanic and impact glasses are both created by the cooling of regolith that has been subjected to intense heat. Glass spherules can record critical details about the mantle composition and the history of both lunar volcanism and impact cratering. As far as the Apollo 17 orange glass is concerned, research back on Earth demonstrated volcanic glass was created when molten lava from the interior of the moon erupted, almost three to four billion years ago, streaming up above the airless surface and into the vacuum of space. As the lava became exposed to the vacuum, it split into little fragments and eventually froze. Then it formed tiny beads of volcanic glass in orange and black colors. Later analysis unveiled measurable water content in the beads. Chinese Rover's Other Achievements China's space mission has been quite successful over the last few decades. Chinese astronauts have brought accolades to their country. They have also modernized their space stations, supporting their astronauts, engineers, and space scientists 
to improve their performance. Chinese Rover has been successful in venturing through space, covering new milestones and discovering exciting things. In May, China landed a rover on Mars, concluding the most challenging stretch of its mission to send an orbiter, lander and rover to the Red Planet. It was China's first independent mission to Mars and made the country only the second after the United States to successfully land a rover on the planet. Planetary scientist Roberto Orosei informed Nature China is doing in a single go what NASA took decades to do, while astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell described China's decision to include a rover in its maiden Mars outing as a very gutsy move. China's Growing Space Presence The China National Space Administration has accomplished a remarkable number of things in the last year, including the Tianwen-1 mission. Numerous Long March rockets, each carrying many payloads, including the Chang'e 5 lunar mission, which returned moon rocks to Earth for the first time since the end of NASA's Apollo program in the 1970s, are among its other accomplishments. Last month, China launched the first stage of its Tiangong space station, which next year is set to become the world's second long-term home for humans in space. The momentous launch didn't go off without a hitch, however, as debris from the launch vehicle made an uncontrolled re-entry back to Earth, eventually splashing down in the Indian Ocean. China's space industry has made a fantastic scorecard this year. It includes the nation's first independent Mars mission. The completion of a global navigation satellite network and a landmark adventure that retrieved rocks and soil from the moon. The Chang'e 5 robotic mission has been this year's most significant event in China's space industry and one of the most notable space activities globally, bringing 1,731 grams of lunar rock and soil back to Earth, a historic achievement 44 years after the last lunar materials were brought back. China became the third nation to successfully collect extraterrestrial samples with the 23-day mission joining the U.S. and the former Soviet Union. President Xi Jinping sent heartfelt congratulations and genuine greetings to all participants on behalf of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, the State Council, and the Central Military Commission in a letter that was published after the samples touched down on Earth. Xi said that as China's most complicated space project, the Chang'e 5 mission completed the national space industry's first extraterrestrial sampling and return. It was the latest accomplishment by China's system which is distinguished by its capability to marshal all available aids to overcome difficulties and acquire its goals and also marks a major step forward for the country's space industry. Chinese rover powers up machines in the pioneering moon mission. The wheeled robot has a design maximum speed of 200 meters per hour or 5.6 centimeters per second or 0.12 miles per hour. But in reality, it does not just stride straight ahead at full speed. The 240-kilogram robot is the central element of the Tianwen-1 mission, the country's first interplanetary adventure that created history by orbiting, landing and roving on Mars, all in its maiden attempt. Since its arrival on the surface, the Zhurong rover has obtained about 10 gigabytes of primary data and has moved close to a kilometer. It first touched down, cocooned inside the lander on May 15 and separated from its landing platform a week later. China's Lunar Missions in Future China is developing a set of robotic spacecraft to land on the moon and joins other countries in the search for water at the lunar south pole. The Chang'e 7 lunar mission is planned to launch around 2024 and will survey the moon from orbit while also landing at and exploring the lunar south pole. A major goal is to find water at the south pole of the moon. Wu Weiren, chief designer of China's lunar exploration program, told China's CCTV during the country's annual political sessions in early March. There are deep lunar craters at the South Pole, which cover about 10 kilometers. If there was water, it could exist in the form of water ice due to the lack of sunlight throughout the year. This year of activity has firmed China's decisive presence in space, and we are only seeing the commencement of its enterprising future. By 2045, China wishes to become a leading space power as recapitulated in the 2018 Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation's route map. In the forthcoming years, we can look forward to witnessing China launch crewed missions to the Tiangong space station, and in future, can expect to see China join other spacefaring nations in missions back to the moon and Mars. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below your thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. And thank you so much for watching.